Before you start yelling and getting all worked up, I just want you to hear me out for just a moment. Robert Pattinson is the perfect choice to play Batman. Now calm down. I know that throws a bunch of people into a frenzy, but it's the truth. He's a great choice for a number of reasons that we're about to jump into. With Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and Pattinson's Batman on the horizon, this may just be the start of a new chapter and a newfound trust that we can all develop with DC Studios again. DC recently announced their latest pair of Batman boots will be filled by none other than the shiny vampire from Twilight, Robert Pattinson. As you can probably guess, the online reaction to this decision was mixed. You know, because 95% angry and negative and 5% positive is still technically mixed. Apparently, people like their Batman a certain way, and anything that's slightly off from what they want is complete and utter garbage. Next time they shine your light in the sky, don't go to it. The bat is dead. Only, I kinda trust billion dollar movie studios to make decent choices. At least, I trust them more than I trust Devin who's commenting on this video that, quote, Robert Pattinson isn't ripped enough to play Batman. It's a fictional character. There's no such thing as character accuracy when the character is made up. That being said, I think Pattinson was a phenomenal choice. For starters, the guy is impenetrable. While most actors, or human beings for that matter, would crumble under all the hate and scrutiny, you can't phase Robert Pattinson. He's used to the hate. Seriously, think about how many shots people have taken at him over the years, and he's remained completely and utterly untouched. He's freaking made a Teflon. The average person would never leave the house again if they had to deal with the things that Robert Pattinson has had to deal with. He was Team Edward. Not only did he have to deal with all the Twilight haters, but half the Twilight fans even hated him. So we already know that Robert Pattinson can play the dark and mysterious and brooding kind of role. The characters aren't too dissimilar when you really think about it. They're both hunky, rich, emo dudes who enjoy lurking in the shadows. Edward Cullen might not wear a cape, but he does spend a good chunk of his time fighting assorted creatures and bad guys. Also, don't vampires traditionally turn into bats, you know? I don't know, I'm just saying. Maybe there's a closer link than we originally anticipated, but that's another rant for another video. As an actor though, Pattinson has what it takes to nail the complexities of the Batman character. His background as Edward Cullen isn't a knock on him, it's actually an incredible asset. Much like his Twilight character, Batman is a highly introverted and often brooding character, but the right person also has to add a unique twist to avoid the same portrayal over and over again. Michael Keaton made sure to amplify the absurdity and craziness of the situation in his two Batman films. I'm Batman. George Clooney really leaned into the whole billionaire playboy thing. Christian Bale upped the loneliness theme. Ben Affleck even tried playing the role with more of a focus on redemption. Oh, and Val Kilmer was Batman too. It's the car, right? Chicks love the car. You know what else all the prior Batman have in common? People hated the idea of them playing the role of Batman. Michael Keaton was primarily known for comedies. Fans scoffed at the idea of Tim Burton making this whole thing overly cheesy and campy. Christian Bale was far from an A-list name when he landed the role, and that got plenty of people worked up. I don't know how much you like to say, I told you so. Fans completely lost their minds when Ben Affleck was announced. His portrayal actually wasn't half bad, although the movie that he acted in was admittedly pretty terrible. Batman is known for a number of things. He's an eccentric billionaire, he beats up bad guys. Above all else though, his number one intention is to scare evildoers. He relies heavily on the intimidation factor. Batman as a superhero is actually quite limited in his abilities, especially when compared to other, you know, actual superhumans with superpowers. Batman the symbol, however, is meant to act as a deterrent. He's the reason that villains should be running out of Gotham with their tails between their legs. Robert Pattinson has the on-screen experience to match that intensity. If you've ever seen David Cronenberg's Cosmopolis, then you've witnessed Pattinson play a cold-hearted tycoon on a hefty downward spiral. He absolutely radiates menace, and you can feel the cruel intentions and power that he yields. He plays someone who could destroy you, and might just do it, which is essentially the feeling that Batman tries to instill in the criminals of Gotham. 
Plus, he's got that Batman chin, you know? I mean, just look at that thing. Would you just look at it? That's a Batman chin. In general, Pattinson has played some pretty impressive roles. It's disappointing that he's widely known for the cheesy, teen-oriented Twilight franchise that might seem to get a lot of hate, because the guy's been able to use that notoriety to propel him into some legit hits. If you've seen Good Time, The Lost City of Z, The Rover, or High Life, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sure, he has some duds, but he's also managed to escape the grips of Twilight and build a respectable career as an actor. At his best, he's brooding and masculine, resilient and unpredictable, sensitive and vulnerable, as well as cunning and calculated. He isn't one of today's typical actors who tend to just play themselves in every role. Do you think it was really so hard for Chris Pratt to play Peter Quill, or for Paul Rudd to portray Scott Lang? We're living in an era where actors typically just put their own personal stamp on a film without having to swim too far away from the shallow end of the pool. Actors are doing less and less acting, and there are fewer and fewer real actors to speak of. Pattinson is undeniably one of them, though. Depending on where director Matt Reeves takes his upcoming Batman project, he could highlight any number of Pattinson's strengths. In fact, his experience with the Twilight franchise might prove invaluable when taking on the role of Batman, because the Dark Knight's love life is an important part of the role. You're beautiful. Beautiful. This is the skin of a killer, bro. Whether he's with Catwoman or Vicki Vale or Selina Kyle or Rachel Dawes or Talia al Ghul, he's typically involved with someone. In order to be in that many romantic relationships, the role can't just be played by a brute. He isn't a one-dimensional, crime-fighting butt-kicker. There needs to be some emotion and, and some tenderness. Pattinson's background with Twilight, as well as his part in romantic films like Remember Me and Water for Elephants, will add a much-needed, softer side to the role of Batman. After all, Edward Cullen's whole M.O. was to protect the ones he cared about despite drowning in gloom. Isn't that, like, kinda exactly Batman as well? Pattinson isn't the only first-timer to get involved in a Batman project. Director Matt Reeves, who you'll probably know from Cloverfield or from the Planet of the Apes movies, is another ideal selection. While Christopher Nolan's version of the story introduced a much grittier, darker telling than we've seen in the past, it's expected that Reeves will keep it within that lane. It won't be just the same exact kind of film, though. According to early reports, it sounds like it'll be a noir-heavy detective story, like a gumshoe-style mystery, only featuring a guy in a cape with bad ears. If done properly, that actually sounds like it has a lot of promise. Which brings me to an interesting point. Where is the bar set for Batman? I mean, seriously, what are the expectations here? We've seen Ben Affleck do it, and we've seen George Clooney do it, so it's not like there haven't been any duds. Batman isn't quite like the Joker, where every portrayal is a memorable one and needs to be better than the last person who did it. Batman has a bit of wiggle room to disappoint, I think. Nice catch! You break it, you buy it. After all, there's just been so many iterations. We're not far removed from Christopher Nolan's incredible trilogy. This height, Paul wouldn't kill me. I'm counting on it. Oh! And there's already been a Lego Batman movie, Batman vs. Superman, and a Batman cameo in Suicide Squad. That's not a lot of time to fully cleanse the palate, you know? Aerate it. Warm it up. It's tough to build up the hype about something new when the latest version isn't too far in the rear view. With a 2021 release date penciled in, that gives the team some time to do this properly, as well as some time to build up the hype and the excitement. It gives them time to hone the story, tweak all the details, and make a movie that's worthy of the Batman legacy. Reeves is an excellent captain of the ship, and Pattinson is a talented actor with the opportunity to redefine his career with a role that doesn't involve teenage vampires. And if you needed any more reassurance that Pattinson was a good choice, just know that when asked for his take on the selection, the gold standard Christian Bale even said it's a, quote, good call. Well, what do you think? How do you feel about Robert Pattinson as Batman? Will he be great? Will he be terrible? Let us know how you feel in the comment section down below. Before you go, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant to stay up to date on all of our latest releases. Until next time, bye!